Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday. Today is May the 11th. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you had a fabulous Mother's Day. It was so awesome to spend part of my Mother's Day with you. I hope you enjoyed that a lot. I know it was a long day, right? I know many of you watched from the very beginning to the very end. Holy moly, that was six hours and 28 minutes of quilt blocks and lots of chat and lots of fun. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you, Miss Chantel, for moderating today. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you. Today we're making the Louisiana quilt block and Miss Sherry. Thank you so much, Miss Sherry. Louisiana quilt block. This is going to be a 12 inch quilt block today. You'll need three colors of fabric. I'm going to leave these up on the screen in case you missed it at the end of the live yesterday. Just going to leave that up there for a minute. It was awesome, right? It was awesome. It was so great. Wow, Sherry, you got six blocks done yesterday, but only three were from the live. Oh, what other three blocks did you do? <clears throat> My voice has been trying to recover all morning. <laughs> <clears throat> all morning. So let me show you some examples, in case you missed it yesterday too, of what this block looks like repeated as a quilt. We have it set in rows and set on point. Thank you, Carol, for helping moderate today. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. It's so great to have a multiple of moderators now so that if someone has something else going on, they don't feel pressured to have to join in the live to moderate. It kind of frees everybody up a little bit. So I am thankful for everybody. And if you can stop in and moderate, excellent. If not, I don't want you to feel pressured like you have to. Ah, you're working from a jelly roll. So all your fabrics and your blocks will be coordinated. Ooh, I can't wait to see pictures. Can't wait to see pictures. The Louisiana quilt block. This should come together relatively quickly today. I have a few questions lined up. A few questions to get you thinking, to get your mind going for this week. <laughs> It'll be a great way to start our week. And I'm going to leave this up for just a few minutes because I'm thinking that maybe some of you might still be either writing these pieces down to make the block later or cutting your pieces because yesterday was such a long day. I was thinking this morning while I was in the shower. <laughs> um, we're going to be making uh, quilt blocks through the rest of this week. Also this week, in the evenings, I'm going to be planning the arrangement that I plan on putting these blocks into a quilt. I want to assess the end of this week if we need to make more quilt blocks to put together a quilt and how many more do we need and what sizes do they need to be or can we transition into making some filler blocks like some four patches or some little pinwheels or something cute to fill in some small areas so I think it's time to start thinking about that and if we need to still make more blocks next week we will if we need to transition into making some filler pieces, then we'll do that. And then we'll come on live and we'll be making this quilt together. I will offer a PDF on how I plan arranging this quilt. And so if you want to do the same layout as me, you'll have that opportunity. But I think there's a million and one different ways you could put this quilt together. But we'll be walking through the whole process together. Uh, putting this quilt top together. So I think it's start, time to start thinking about the transition. How many more blocks do we need? What sizes do they need to be? 
And then, do we need to make any fillers? It's possible. I don't know yet. <laughs> but I'm going to be working on that this week. Our lives might change as we progress into next week. We're going to see. We're going to see. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. So great to see you. I saw that, Sherry. That was an awesome little tutorial. Thank you so much for sharing that washi tape trick. Diana, you like the idea of making some filler blocks. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you could see right there. See that little gray area? That's my design wall poking through there. <laughs> it might be possible that we have some areas that are like that. That's probably four by four or six, four by four inches. I think it would be cute to do a four patch there or maybe a square and a square, something cute to fill in areas that are like that. I don't know if we'll have areas in the final arrangement. I'm not sure yet, but if we do have areas like that, then I'll let you know how many we need to make. We'll make them in a live video. And then uh, we'll start piecing this quilt together. But I want to see, I want to see this week, work on that arrangement. Kathleen. Yes, that's what we're talking about now. Um, so all through this series, all through this series, just like you see here on the screen, we started out just originally at the very beginning of this series, 44 videos ago, <laughs> just doing some traditional quilt block tutorials. And it wasn't really in my mind that I would put them all together as a quilt. And with each quilt block, I've shown an example of how you could use that one quilt block and make it into a quilt. So y'all, we have like 49 different kinds of quilts we could make. Plus you could pair up blocks one and blocks three together and make a quilt out of, there's endless possibilities with what you could do with all these quilt blocks. As we progressed and I started putting the blocks on the wall, I thought that this would be a spectacular sampler block quilt, right? So then I transitioned into to the thought that I would put these all together as a quilt in the end. So that's what we're going to do. However, you certainly don't have to do that. You could make several, you could make like two good lap size quilts out of these blocks if you've been making them all along. You could make several table runners out of these blocks if you've made them all along. You could make some wall hangings. You could make a lot of wall hangings if you did all of these blocks already. <laughs> Or you could just make one block like the Louisiana and you could set it two different ways and make a quilt with just the one quilt block. So the options are endless. But yes, I will be putting all of the blocks you see behind me together as a sampler quilt. And that's what I'm going to be planning in the evenings this week. And that'll determine how many more blocks we have to make after this week. Or if we can transition into putting this quilt together. Thank you so much. Yep, today's our seventh year anniversary. That's awesome. Eight years ago today, Harlan and I had our very first date. And then uh, we got married exactly a year later. So, Miss Kathleen, this is going to look different for every, for many of us because I do know, I do know that uh, because I've heard from so many people, I do know that uh, many people have only made the twelve inch blocks like today's block. They would make that one, but they haven't made the ten inch or the eight inch or the six inch blocks, or they've taken the six inch block and did the math to make it a twelve inch block. 
if that's the case, then our quilts are going to look totally different, right? And that's, that is absolutely wonderfully different, right? And that's fine. But if you've been making all the quilt blocks, all of the different sizes that I've given, you'll be able to put together a quilt just like mine in the end, or you can swap everything around and come up with your own layout. There are no rules. There's no rules. Wow, Sandy, you did five of the six quilt blocks yesterday. Wow. 49 years, Sherry, that's a long time. Congratulations. Diane, you just had your 30th anniversary. That's awesome. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Just scrolling through. Title says 33. Oh, it's probably a typo. <laughs> Sherry, the title of the video, I'll have to go back and change that. It's a typo. I'll have to fix the title of this video, evidently. Mimsy, you're going to have your 40, 41st anniversary. Happy anniversary. Debbie, it's seven years for you. Yay. All right, everybody. Who's ready to start sewing together a quilt block? Who's ready to start sewing together a quilt block? Let me bring you over to my work table. Today I'm using the same colorways as the example. I'm actually using a shirt for my blue. <laughs> a couple months ago I went to the Goodwill and picked up a lot of button front shirts and some t-shirts. This blue fabric here is one of those button front shirts. I've used it in one other block. The pinwheels and blocks right there, right there. The four corners of that block is the same blue fabric here on the screen. And I thought I, I should probably include it in another block just so it kind of ties in somewhere. <laughs> so that's what that is. And then a light brown and a dark brown. Here are my pieces for today. Y'all are ready. Y'all are ready. Okay, so I have some questions that'll get y'all's minds warmed up for the week. So if you want to play along with that and then make the block later, that's absolutely fine with me. And I'll come back tonight and read all your answers. <laughs> and if you have questions for me, it would be really helpful if you type them in all caps. And that way, it'll make it a lot easier for, uh, for me to find them when I scroll through. Yeah, Carol, uh, we have several Goodwills in our area, but one of them is a retail outlet where they sell by the pound. And I love sourcing really cool shirts to use in my stash. Oh, I thought I changed that. I thought I changed that. Hold on a second. Y'all, it's Monday for me. I thought I changed that. Give me just a second. L-O-U-I-S-I-A-N-A. -I -I 12 inch. Quilt block. And this is video. <laughs> Oh, not money. Not 33. 44. There we go. Come on, Lisa. I had someone yesterday, and I can't recall who exactly it was off the top of my head, leave a post on my Facebook business page yesterday asking why I charged money to watch yesterday's live stream. <laughs> Just letting you know, the live streams are absolutely free to watch. <laughs> I don't charge money 
to watch the live streams. You are free to come on in. People did donate at the end, and I think that's what made it confusing. Thank you, everybody, who did that, but you don't have to. But I think maybe they were confused by that. I don't know, but nope. All the videos on YouTube are absolutely free to watch. You don't have to pay to watch them. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? This is video 44, but it's not actually the 44th quilt block. It's more than that. It's actually the 44th live video for quilt blocks, but the blocks, we actually have more than 44. I know that's confusing. I'm numbering the live videos. I have not been numbering the blocks. Confusing, right? <laughs> it's confusing. Let me get this iron moved over here and get her warming up. <clears throat> We're jumping in. We're jumping in. We have a little bit of pre-work to do. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a little bit of pre-work to do. We're going to start with our biggest piece today, the dark brown. Seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. We're cutting this block two times. Miss Sandy, I mostly look for 100% cotton shirts uh, at the Goodwill, but every once in a while you find that really silky, really pretty shirt or skirt or stretchy pants that have a really cool design in them. Maybe you find a scarf that is just beautiful. It's not cotton. I buy it anyways because I do lots of art quilts and those fabrics serve really well as sky areas or grass areas or, you know, I, I buy the interesting stuff even if it's not cotton and it gets used in my art quilts. So I look at everything. We are cutting this first piece. Connie, you are so, so funny. You are so funny. These pins are in my way. Let's move them over here because I hardly use them. We're cutting this first block two times. I have I have a mess after yesterday. I haven't even vacuumed my floor with all the confetti of dog ears on it yet. We're cutting this block right down the middle. And then we're going to turn it and we're going to cut it one more time. That's going to give us four larger brown triangles. Dark brown. You might be using a different color though. There's the first one lined up. And the second one lined up nice and straight on the mat. And we're going to cut it one more time. So there's four large triangles. And next we're going to bring in all the pieces, the light brown and the blue. There's two of each that measure three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. We cut these pieces one time, one time right down the middle. kind of really excited to start making a plan for this quilt. <laughs> this quilt's going to go down in the history books through the generations in our families, right? I think so. There's the blue ones and the light brown. We now have four blue smaller, excuse me, smaller triangles and four light brown triangles. And that's all the cutting for today. Yay. <laughs> that's all the cutting for today. I'm going to give everybody a chance to catch up here. So we have four big dark brown, 
four smaller light brown and four blue triangles. Hello everybody who's just come in. So great to see you. I do have to change. <laughs> I had a typo in the title of this video. So as soon as we're done, I'll be changing. It's not number 33. I know that's confusing. I had a typo. I'll be changing it to video number 44. <laughs> Doris, you're back to work tomorrow. Yep, everybody's going to start going into a transition of getting back to some sorts. It's not going to be normal, right? It's a transition. They're calling it phases. Phase one, phase two. Everybody's going to start transitioning back to uh, different ways of getting back to our normal. And that does mean that a lot of us are going to start going back to work if not this week, if not next week, the week after. So I do want to be mindful, although I want to come on live for the duration of this. It is something that we need to start transitioning these blocks if we want to put it together as a quilt. So I'm working on that, working on a plan, how we can transition all of our blocks into a quilt and do lives for that. Plus, all those who are going back to work, a lot of you have been working this whole time, right? And you're still following along in the series. I feel really bad because I know you're excited about making the blocks, but your time is limited. And as a lot of us start transitioning back to work, those people's time is going to be limited too. So it's all stuff I'm trying to be mindful of. It is Monday. I've, I've been making typos here and there. <laughs> All right. I'm thinking that that was enough time to get our pieces cut. So let's start with the first question today. And these are questions that are just meant to get your mind rolling, get your mind warmed up for the week. I want you to tell me about a time when you were totally out of your comfort zone. It could be with making quilts. It could be with another art project or learning embroidery or learning how to quilt using a long arm. It could be maybe a time at your job when you were totally out of your comfort zone. Maybe it was buying a new house and that was out of your comfort zone, something. Tell me about a time when you were totally out of your comfort zone, but you pulled through and you made it. You pulled through and you made it. We're going to go ahead and start laying out this quilt block. So our other pieces that we didn't touch today are three and a half inches by six and a half inches. We have four of those. And then we have our triangles. I'm going to put them off like a little paint palette <laughs> off to the side. There's my little paints. Let's start with the larger pieces that we did not cut. And we're going to rotate them. Y'all, it doesn't matter if I turn this one way or another. It's the same way from all directions. So my right side up is your right side up as well. We're going to be laying out these longer pieces in the four corners, just like you see here. Ta-da! Miss Janice, let me get uh, these blocks laid out and then I'll pull the measurements back up. Okay. We have, let's see, our big brown triangles. We're going to lay them out just like a pinwheel. I know some of my pinwheel people 
They're going to love this block. We're making a pinwheel today. Just like this. I like the blocks that automatically make a pinwheel and you don't have to think about it. <laughs> this one. This one we might have to think about it a little bit. So there's our big pinwheel. Then we have our smaller brown triangles. The longest side of the triangle is going to go towards the edge of our brown triangle just like that. They're going to be overlapping for a little bit until we can start sewing this together because we have our seam allowances in there. She's going to be a pretty quilt block. So there, there's a smaller pinwheel just like that. And then we have our four smaller blue triangles and they're going to fill in the empty spaces with the longest side of the triangle again right next to the large brown triangle just like that. Essentially we're going to be making four flying geese units for this block. That's how we're going to end up putting it together. I guess I didn't think about the stripes on this shirt going in every which way when I picked out this blue fabric. That's all right. <laughs> it's going to look a little crazy. I'm going to leave this layout here for just a second. And then Janice, I will pull up the measurements for this block before we move on. I want everybody to see this for a minute and get your pieces laid out. So great to see everybody today. So great to see you. So this is the layout of all of our pieces. A big pinwheel, a small pinwheel. Those end up making four flying geese units and that's how we're going to put this block together. <laughs> Thank you, Libby. Yep, it's recycled shirts and some browns out of my stash. I think it's going to be pretty. The stripes are messing with my eyes a little bit, though. I didn't think about that. Let me pull up for Miss Janice the pieces so she can write those down. Here are the pieces that we started with. I'll leave that on the screen for a second so you can write them down. Those of you who are sewing, set your quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure that's ready to go. Get your iron warmed up. You can do it. It's Monday. She had a long day yesterday. You did so good yesterday. Yes, you did. All right. There you go. You got him, Miss Janice. All right. Yeah, name a time when you were totally out of your comfort zone. I know at the beginning of this series, 44 quilt, 44 live videos, today is video 45. I might have a typo there too. I don't know. <laughs> at the beginning of this series, I was totally out of my comfort zone, but it's gotten so much easier. I was out of my comfort zone. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. Mm. Wow. Miss Connie, having twins was out of your comfort zone. I guess so. I guess so. Double of everything. Yeah.
Yep, let me change that. 44. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was Monday morning for me when I got this video together today. It was Monday morning for me. All right, Miss Janice, I think that's, I think you should probably have those written down by now. Let's go back to the working screen. Here's our pieces laid out. Let's start sewing. Let's see, we're going to start by making the four flying geese units. And it really doesn't matter which pieces you start with. So let's flip over the light brown right onto the large brown triangle, just like this, and like this. Just letting you know, if today's the first time watching, there's a whole bunch of other videos in this series, and if you subscribe and hit the bell notification, you'll be notified when I go live. That'll be really helpful. When you flip the little triangle onto the big one. I want you to line up the this long side of the brown, line up your raw edges there, just like that. Your little extra flip will be at the top point of the big brown triangle. And y'all know me, I'm gonna just mark these seams. So that I pay attention at the sewing machine. All right, we're gonna start sewing. We're gonna just chain piece these four. Oh, I marked the wrong side. See? Pay attention, Lisa. Pay attention. I have a feeling it's gonna be one of those days, y'all. We're sewing four seams. There's the first one. Line up that bottom raw edge and then the side. That's gonna give us our quarter inch seam allowance at the top of the brown triangle which we need that when we go to piece together this quilt block. Here's the third and we've got one more. So we are on our way with our first four seams. Just going to separate these. And I'm going to give them a press. I'll be pressing mine towards the smaller triangle. Smaller triangle. So that was the first question. Name a time when you found yourself totally out of your comfort zone. I look forward to reading those answers. We can move on with question number two. I'm going to bring these pieces back. Tell me about the most favorite quilt that you've ever made. Do you have that one quilt that has always been your favorite that you've made? I want you to tell me what has been your favorite quilt that you've ever made. And you can tell me about it. Do you still have it? Or did you gift it? Did you give it to somebody? 
you can tell me the pattern name, like, you know, what did it look like? Did it use your favorite colors? Tell me all about it. I want to hear about your favorite quilt that you've ever made. So here's our four pieces, and we can bring those right back. And things will start shrinking down into place a little bit. Just like that. So that's pretty, and that was pretty easy, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the blue triangle right on over. Again, lining up to the bottom long edge of the brown. And those will be our next four seams that we're sewing. But I'm going to pause as soon as I get these blue triangles flipped over so that if you're sewing with me live, you have a chance to finish your first four seams and get them pressed. Just like that. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much. I think so too. Debbie, you said the gray and the plaid look good on the screen and the blank spaces. I, I know. That would make a really interesting color combination, wouldn't it? One of the reasons why I went with a gray design wall because it's sort of neutral and it kind of just goes with everything and it doesn't really clash with any quilt blocks that you put up there while you're designing quilts. <laughs> Kathy, you're working on your very first quilt. That is awesome. I'm so proud of you. Dorothy, you're also new. Well, we'll get you finishing up one of those quilts. We're going to get you to finish one of them. Mary, you're new. We're going to get you making a quilt. Yes, we are. Vicki, you've recruited your hubby into making quilts. I think that's awesome. Jerry, you're new and you don't have a favorite yet. Give it some time. You'll have a favorite. <laughs> You'll have a favorite. All right, I think that should have been a good amount of time. We can go ahead and sew the next four seams. That's going to be adding our blue triangles. Right on the other side of the big brown triangle, four more seams. Sherry says, what happened my three and seven eighths? block cut in half is too short for the long side. So this was the three and seven eighths. It was cut in half and yours is too short for the long side. Let's move this off to the side. When you have your three and seven eighths piece and you're flipping it onto the big triangle. Here's the big triangle. It has three sides. You're adding these two smallers to the two smaller sides. And this big long side, we're not actually sewing anything to that side. But when you flip over your triangle to sew your seam, 
you'll match up the raw edge along that brown side. If this piece is too short to fit right through here, then maybe you might want to check your 3 8 pieces to begin with and see if you cut them out right. Yesterday, I had cut one of my 3 and 7 8 pieces entirely too big and didn't realize it. <laughs> so it's possible that maybe your piece was cut incorrectly or you're adding it to the wrong side of your brown triangle. All right, we're sewing four more triangles. Yeah, yesterday, <laughs> I was surprised that was the only cutting mistake I had made out of all those pieces yesterday. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Here's our third one. We've got one more. I'm going to separate these and give them a press. Yes, Miss Sherry, the big brown one, the big brown square started off at seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And that brown square was cut two times to make four triangles. We can move on to question number three. What a, we've asked favorite colors before. What is your least favorite color? A color that you avoid putting into your quilt projects or your painting projects or your crochet projects. What's a color, your least favorite color? Least favorite color. I tried to see by looking at my fabric stash what my least favorite color is. And it, it's actually funny. I have the least amount of purple fabric and purple is my favorite color. But I think I have the least amount of purple fabric because that fabric gets used the most. <laughs> that fabric gets used the most. So I have the least of it. But I thought brown was my least favorite. But I'm really starting to love the brown in combination with some of these other colors like the blue and the pink and yellow brown used to be my least favorite but the more i use it the more i'm really falling in love with different shades of brown so here are our flying geese units i'm going to bring them back in but then i'm going to take them up and just clip off the little dog ears <laughs> And that'll just reduce some of the bulk. At the very top of our large brown triangle, we have the little dog ears that stick up and on the sides. I'm going to go ahead and just trim those off. And that'll give you a chance to finish sewing your, your four blue triangles and get them pressed. Least favorite color. I thought mine was brown. But I'm starting to transition into loving brown. <laughs> That's funny. Hmm. 
Once you get these flying geese units made, you'll notice that they're the same size as the pieces next to them, the solid blue. They're the same. There we go. We got all the little dog ears. Y'all can join your little dog ear family on the floor down there until I vacuum. There you go. I love going through and reading your answers. I wish I had time just to sit and chit chat and, and read every single answer. <laughs> That's what I do in the evening, but I love going through and something doesn't, oh, <laughs> thank you, Wanda. When I trimmed the little dog ears, I flipped him around the wrong way. Y'all are on it today. Y'all are on it. Y'all are on it. Y'all are on it. That's what happens when I talk at the same time as trying to do something else. Least favorite color to use in your projects. So, this block is going to come together as a four patch. We have the units that will look just like this. And each one of the four sections. Can you see that? There we go. It'll be made up of a flying geese and the solid blue. So, what I'm going to do is just flip over the flying geese unit for each one. like that, like that, and like that. And we're sewing the seam that joins both of those pieces. Doesn't hurt me to just go ahead and mark that even though I know which one it is. If I'm talking, it doesn't mean I won't swip, switch it by the time I move it. <laughs> We're gonna sew those seams with a quarter inch seam allowance. So there's the first one. Trying to line up those raw edges nice and straight. You can throw some pins in there if you need to. There's the third one or the second one. And we have one more left to do. One more left. Okie doke. Here 
is our four sections. Four sections. When I press these, I'm going to be pressing them towards the bigger blank section because that little tip of my flying geese, those seams coming together, just naturally wants to lay flatter that way. You can press your seams open if that's what you like to do. So we got these four seams to press. There's one. And two. Three and one more. Each one of my little flying geese units behaved very nicely today. Not all of them did yesterday, <laughs> but today I managed to keep all my points with my flying geese. So that's awesome. Yesterday, that didn't happen for each one of my blocks. That's all right. <laughs> now we're just laying this out. Here's our first one. And our second. I'm not quite sure that I love the stripes in this shirt for this block, but that's all right. We're gonna keep it. I didn't think about that, but I'm gonna keep it. There we go. We now have our four patch Give everybody a chance to catch right up. I can't say this enough, but thank you to all of my moderators. Y'all make it so nice. So nice to be able to do a live chat and not have to worry about any silliness. Don't have to worry about that. Our last question for the day. And I was just curious. I was just curious as I was thinking in the shower, how many of the happiness at home blocks have you made so far? I know we do have lots of viewers who have just been watching the series and are on the fence about making the blocks or they know that there's some of them that they want to make when this is all over. And then I know some of you have made blocks all along from the beginning. So I was just curious, how many of the happy at home quilt blocks have you made so far? Thank you, Miss Connie. Thank you. Yeah, see, Lulu, uh, even if you're not making the quilt blocks, I think it's awesome that you're hanging out with us and spending time with fellow minded creators, right? We're all creators. I think it's great that you're just following along and enjoying this series. It might be something you revisit five years from now. You know, maybe one of these quilt blocks will speak to you and five years you use it in a quilt. I'm, I'm glad you're following along even if you're not making the quilt blocks.
I was just curious. Just being curious. We're going to go ahead and piece together this four pack, y'all. And I want you to stay tuned because here in just a minute, I'm going to show you the pieces for tomorrow's block. So for our four patch, we're flipping over. And we're sewing the seam that joins the two pieces. Just like that. Just like that. Better safe than sorry, Lisa. Let's mark them. <laughs> Let's mark them. And I'm going to go ahead and sew these two seams. Line up those raw edges, throw a pin in there if you need to. So there's one. And our second one. I think it's almost time to retire that little purple leader in the sewing machine right now. <laughs> the black thread going through that little leader and end that little spider there. She is thick with thread. I'm going to give these a press. And I just want to point out before I press them. Right in this section here, you have the two flying geese coming down. If you open up that seam, it's going to lay a little bit flatter right in the middle of this pinwheel. And I don't usually press my seams open, but because we're going to have four seams coming right into the middle of that pinwheel, let's go ahead and press this seam open. Just like that. I open it up with my finger and then I'll give it a good press. which takes me a little bit longer, but that's all right. So that's what that seam looks like from the back. Let's get this one opened up and flattened out. <laughs> and then I'll press this one too. The pinwheels have a lot of fabric coming right into the middle of them. fabric and thread, right? Those seams coming right in the middle there. And there we go. So let's flip that around. Flip that around. We have one more seam to finish up to finish up this block, I just saw something pretty interesting. The little brown forms a smaller pinwheel, but it also will come together and make kind of a square. Right? You see that? A pinwheel or a square that's covered up by a large pinwheel. <laughs> Tricky. We're going to do this one last seam. We're going to try to be really mindful to line up that middle seam get those to meet and sew this last seam joining this four patch together.
Snip. Diana, your points came out perfect. Congratulations. Every once in a while it happens, right? That's awesome. Now I'm wondering, can I press that to one side or is it still pretty thick? Uh, you're probably better off opening up this seam too <laughs> and pressing this last seam open. If you want to decrease the thickness right in the middle of this pinwheel, go ahead and open it up and press it open. If you're not worried about the thickness, then you can press it to the side like I normally do. Flip it over and take a look at that. Give it one more press from the top and then we'll do the big reveal. Big reveal. Just being honest because I like keeping it real with everybody. The blue the little gray stripes in the blue shirt are throwing my eyes for a loop. I wish I would have thought about that before cutting apart this shirt, but I still think she's pretty. And I kept my points. Kept my points. And everything met right in the middle. So what more could you ask for, right? What more could you ask for? She's pretty. Sally says, if you press your opposite seam in opposite directions, you can twirl your middle seam. I've never been good at that. My glory. Sally, I'm going to need a lesson because I've tried and tried twirling that middle seam. I've tried twirling it. I can never get it to twirl like that, to rotate around. I know lots of people twirl their middle seams, right? I've just never been really good at it. To be honest, I don't do lots of pinwheels where I have to worry about that little middle seam being so thick right there. <laughs> but yes, try twirling your seams. I've just not been that great at it. Going through, seeing if we have any questions. Let's see. The Louisiana block is block 49. You have it as number 44. Miss Veronica, it's actually video number 44. Uh, I've been uh, numbering the actual live videos. So that you could keep track of, let's say, this is video, go to video number 39, like that. I haven't been numbering the actual quilt blocks themselves. I know that's confusing. I know that's confusing. Here we are. Here we are. Now, uh, I want to go ahead and flip over the screen so you have a few minutes before we end up today to be able to jot down the pieces in case you want to sew with me live tomorrow. Tomorrow's block is another 12-inch quilt block. It's called Odds and Ends, and you'll need three colors of fabric. 
the pieces are up here on the screen and what size they need to be in an example picture of the block. I'll also pull on the screen examples of different quilt layouts using this same block, just turned and rotated different ways. That's pretty cool, right? I know, Sally, you love the pinwheels. I thought about you this morning when I was cutting out the pieces for this block. I said, this block is right up Sally's alley. Get it, Sally's alley. <laughs> it's going to be a long day, y'all. It's going to be a long day. Right, the quilt in the middle has got a lot of flowy movement. It's got a lot of movement in it, right? I kind of like this block because if you turn it on point, it kind of looks like a butterfly. And we've had some people asking if we could make a butterfly block. This one kind of looks like a butterfly. So we're gonna call it a little butterfly. So I like it on point too, for that reason. Bonnie says it looks like little bow ties. It does, doesn't it? Yes, so these are the pieces you'll need for tomorrow. I'm gonna go with the same colorway as what you see on the screen, the yellow and purple. And that way, it'll sort of tie in. I've got that yellow and purple block. And she's kind of all by herself in the quilt. Let me take a look. Yeah. <laughs> she's kind of all by herself. And when I look at my design wall, it kind of just pops out. And I like my eyes to flow over a quilt and not be immediately drawn to one section. When I look at my design wall, that purple and yellow block just kind of pops out to me. So I think I need another one, another one in there, just, you know, sort of even it out a little bit. So I'm using the same colors, purple and yellow, tomorrow. But you don't have to. You can use whichever colors you want because there's no rules. Wanda, that's a great idea. You could embroider little antennas for your butterflies. I like that idea. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yep, we're going to call those little butterflies. <laughs> So tomorrow, another 12 inch quilt block. Y'all, uh, I know that this might look fancy and all. She looks kind of fancy, but she's actually gonna go together pretty quickly. If we just wanna take a quick little dive into this block tomorrow, we're gonna be making uh, two half square triangles, two half square triangle units blocks. We're going to be making two strip sets and we're going to be making a four patch and then we'll be putting this block together. So that's pretty cool how you can take just those units, a strip set, half square triangle and a four patch and make a block out of it. I like that. 
Could you, could I see just one of them again? Which one do you need to see, Miss Joan? Oh, oh, just the one quilt block. Yeah, there you go. And uh, that's not video. I know what I did. This will be video 45. <laughs> I was all mixed up this morning. I was all mixed up. This will be video 45. Chantel, someone was saying just a few comments. It's, it's, I'd have to scroll to find it. But they were saying if you snowballed uh, one of the yellow blocks in this block, the snowball is just adding a little square to the corner and sewing a diagonal line, which gives you like a little triangle in your corners. Some of our earlier videos, we snowballed some of those pieces. Same technique. If you did that with this block, it would give you another like fancy, fancy design in this quilt block when you put it together. This one should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun. And I'm going to be working on a layout for all of this. I'll be working on that in the evenings and figuring out what we need to do, how many more blocks we need to do. I know we'll be making blocks up until Friday. I don't know how many blocks after Friday we need to make or if we need to start making some filler blocks. We might need some little four patches or something. Connie says, she's got a good point. The leaders are so important when working with points. They won't get lost in your machine. That is so, that is so, so right, Connie. Words are hard right this second. When did we start today? Let's see. How long have we been going? Dun, 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 dun. For an hour and 13 minutes. So it's just around uh, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time today. Mimsy, we might do borders. We might not need to do borders, but we'll probably do a border. <laughs> we probably will. Carol, purple is my favorite color, too. Purple is my favorite, too. So that's what we're doing tomorrow, odds and ends. About the same time tomorrow, depending on Harlan's work schedule. He's still working from home, y'all. He's still teleworking. So it's all dependent on how his work schedule goes. Because it is the work week. I keep forgetting that, but more than likely the same time tomorrow, this is where you'll find me. We'll be doing odds and ends. I look forward to seeing pictures of your quilt blocks if you want to post them over on Creative Crew Group. And on that note, as of this morning, we had three people trying to join the group, but they only answered one of the security questions. And I'm just going to let you know, you need to go back and answer the second question. Because we're really tightening up, tightening up security. The larger our group gets, we're weeding the flower gardens, y'all. We're keeping all the, the good flowers and we're weeding out the weeds so that there's no funny business over on Creative Crew Group. If you want to join, you got to answer the two security questions. They're not hard. But it keeps a lot of the fake accounts on Facebook out of our group. It keeps a lot of the spammers out of our group. And uh, we get a really good indication if you really want to be a, an active member of Creative Crew Group or if you're just there to cause trouble, right? 
two security questions. If you're waiting to be joined in and you've only answered one, you need to go revisit that. Sharon has a question. Given that there are almost 50 blocks, a quilter could get two small throws from all the blocks. How many plan on doing only one large quilt and how many people plan on doing two or smaller quilts? Good question for everybody. We'll stay a second so that y'all can answer Sharon's question. Miss Dort, you want to know if we can make it to 60 blocks? <laughs> we might have to. i got to figure out a, a layout. We might have to do 60 blocks. Linda's going to be making table runner from some of the 12-inch quilt blocks. Bye, Miss Pat. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Sherry, I can't believe we made it through a six and a half hour live stream with minimal issues in our live chat. I was so surprised. Ooh, Connie found her quarter inch seam accessory last week. Yeah, I bet you that made a difference, right? Harlan says as of tomorrow, as of right now, there's no work meetings for tomorrow. So we'll be on around 12, between 12 and 12.30, unless that changes. Vicki, feel free to change the colors for tomorrow's block. You don't have to use the colors that I'm using. Absolutely. Change them out to what you have or what you like. Yeah, I hope you feel like you can... Uh, Take the creative liberties to change the colors as much as you like. Y'all are so welcome. Bye, Brenda. Have a good day. Sherry says she's probably going to make a medium-sized quilt, and she probably won't be doing all of the blocks. Susan thinks she's going to do one large quilt. Diane says when she does it, she'll probably make one large quilt. Kathy looks like she's going to make a wall hanging. What a great idea. Jeannie's going to make smaller quilts. She's going to go through and pick out the blocks that she likes to do that. Connie's going to make a large quilt. Miss Dorothy, you're so welcome. It's my pleasure. Linda's going to make a large quilt. Cherry says it depends on if it'll make a queen size quilt. Then it'll be a large quilt. Miss Joan, I'm so glad that this has been helpful for you. I'm going to tell you what has been helpful for me too. Piecing. My piecing has improved so much from video number one to where we are right now. <laughs> Debbie is undecided. Susan says three smaller throws for three kiddos. That's what she's going to do. Debbie's undecided but leaning towards a large quilt to put over her couch. Or as a picnic quilt. I like that idea. Mimsy's making the blocks that she can uh, make with her scraps and make a fussy lap quilt. That's such a good idea, too. Wow. So there you go. Lots of different answers. We have lots of different ways, and I just scrolled through a small section of it. But, yeah, you can go through and read everybody's answers. Dinner was awesome. Oh, it was so good. Dinner was good. Marie says, how can I look this up to see the other blocks? All right, Miss Marie, when you uh, 
depending on which device you're using, cell phone, tablet, computer, uh, you need to open up the description box of this video. You're going to see lots of things down there. There's two PDFs that you can download. Uh, they have little example pictures of the blocks that we've done. If you want to make your own little journal or quilt book with all of the measurements and take notes, there's two PDFs with that in the description box. But there's also a link to the entire playlist, all of the videos for all of the blocks you see behind me on the wall, there's a video for each one of them. And so the link to the playlist is in the description box below, or you can just simply, uh, in the search bar on YouTube, type in Lisa Capen Quilts and uh, hit on videos, and they're all in order. You just scroll through. <laughs> Lisa Capen Quilts here on YouTube. If you subscribe and hit the bell notification, a little box will put, come up and it'll say all, some, or something like that. If you click all, then you will get notified when I go live. So that's helpful too, right? Thank you so much, Glenda. Thank you. Celeste is going to call her quilt the sanity quilt. <laughs> yes. Sharon, I feel the same way. I, I've always been nervous to do live videos here on YouTube. But since we've been doing them, everybody has been so, so nice and supportive. Such a great group of very talented artists here. And I am thankful for this group. Danny wants to know, is Retain the best thing to use on my picture quilt? I think you're going to need to do some experimenting, Danny, with your inks. Because not all inks are the same. Not all printer inks are the same. So you really need to set up some time where you can do some experimenting. Some people's printers don't need anything to set their inks because they're permanent and archival and all that good fun stuff. Some people can use vinegar to set their inks and they're permanent. Some people need to use a product called Bubble Jet. Some people need to use Retain. Uh, some people throw some ash powder, I think that's what it is, to set the colors and make them permanent. So it all depends on your printer and the kind of ink that is in your printer. And unfortunately, there's not like a one blanket answer to that. You're going to have to do a little bit of legwork to see what works best for your inks. I wish there was an easy way to answer that question, but it's going to require a little bit of experimenting. <laughs> thank you so much Vicki thank you Jackie you're new I'm so glad you're you're hanging in with us and spending time with us all right y'all I could probably sit here all day and chat with y'all and be completely happy. However, I am starting a quilt on commission today. So I do have, I got to go to work too. <laughs> I got to go get some work done. I got to go get some work done. I love you, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm going to look forward to seeing you tomorrow for odds and ends. If you miss these pieces, you can come back on the replay. If you make this block later, I hope you leave some comments down in the comment section and let me know how it turns out. Have a fabulous day. Bye, everybody.